All right, let's get to it. Today in the best of, a Grammy award-winning singer, songwriter is bringing her Stay I Miss You tour to Washington next month. We're talking about Lisa Loeb starting her career with the platinum-selling hit song Stay I Miss You from the film Reality Bites, if you remember that. It was the first pop musician to have a number one single while not signed to a recording contract. So Lisa joined us to continue the conversation this morning. Lisa, it's an honor to have you with us. How are you? Good. I'm all warm. I'm like cozy and warm in my really chilly Los Angeles <laughs> morning here with my like fuzzy sweater. I have to say I, I love this sweater, sweater too. Looks fabulous. I know. It's, thank you. And she's got the water too. <laughs> my so new you water bottle. Can you believe this? Oh, that's Looks like funny. a bottle of hairspray. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. I know. I got it at a folk festival this weekend in Los Angeles. I was visiting the band The Hollow Trees, who is playing at a banjo and folk festival. I recently made a record with them that we've been putting out the videos. And um, they're an old-timey band, and I went to see them play by themselves. That's awesome. I want to get one of those now. I love that. She that out. <laughs> I know. Doesn't everybody? Yes. So, Lisa, you obviously wear many hats. Um, touring musician, serious XM host, an actor, philanthropist, all that. Tell us what yeah. inspired you to get into music in the first place. I mean, I was just, I, I, I loved music growing. It's funny, I'm looking at my desk here. I'm at my desk. Here's a cassette tape from when I was little. Mm -hmm. um, Barry Manilow and... Ah. Um, and, and Barbara Streisand, Guilty, Cassette. I just listened to music so much growing up, and I loved the feeling of it when I listened to it. Mm. We listened to classical music, musical theater, uh, soft pop from the 70s, a lot of rock like uh, Queen and Elton John and uh, Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. And I just, not only did I love the feeling of playing an instrument, I started with piano and then I moved to guitar. I loved writing songs ever since I was a little kid. There was just something about that string that connects you between your head and your heart and the instrument and the melodies and the words. It's kind of like the reason that I think AI, even though it might sound like a song, it actually doesn't have that human connection that makes it this this thing that you want to make and that you want to listen to. Mm. So I just, I always loved music. And as I got older, you're showing some pictures from my summer camp um, record uh, promotion. I made, I started making family friendly records. And one of the records I made was Camp Lisa, which I, I just, not only was music something I loved making and performing and trying to be good at, you know, like being a, a great pianist or a guitar player or everything. Um, it was a it was a social thing, you know. I really started playing acoustic guitar a lot during summer camp. It was a way to gather with friends to change the words of popular songs like "Stairway to Heaven" mm. to to "Stairway to Cabin One Plus." You know, <laughs> like it was it was a way to perform. It was a way to express myself, and I just I love it so much. And um, I've been really lucky all my life to have places to perform, whether it was at school assemblies or summer camp in college with my uh, friend. We had a band for six years and we had a great audience and that continued on. So it's just something that's always meant a lot to me, yeah. um, being able to tell stories, connect with people. And it's just like a really, you know, you get in the zone when you when you get to hear music that you love or that inspires you in some way. That's great. You obviously own your craft and you're very hard working as well. You recently released your 15th album, A Simple Trick to Happiness, and a new musical, Together Apart. Talk about your projects and when do you have time to do all of <laughs> Like, oh my goodness. I don't, I don't know. In fact, I woke up this morning and I thought, oh my gosh, I have so many jobs. I like, I have an eyewear line. I'm a voiceover artist. I have a, I'm a DJ. I'm in the middle of putting out a new record. I just finished collaborating on a great song about composting with an, a voiceover artist um, named Debbie Derryberry, who's the voice of Jimmy Neutron. I just, I get so many things that people come to me with that they're interested in doing. And I also have a lot of ideas of things that I want to do and I and I rely on my my manager of 30 years to help me organize some of this stuff I also like to organize things myself my family supports me um, but yeah I made a record called a simple trick to happiness that's my most recent grown-up record you could see all the videos on YouTube um, and it's a lot of themes that I think are important to me they're things that I've, it's funny, when I was picking my kids up at school, I've got younger kids, they're 11 and 14, but when I made that, they were even younger, and you spend a lot of time talking to parents, and there'd be things that somebody would say to me that would just be mind-blowing, some piece of advice or talking about life, and I, the same thing would happen. I would say something to somebody else, and they seemed so surprised and inspired, and I realized these are the kind of themes and things that I want to talk about in a song. So I made this record that I'm, I'm really proud of. I play those songs live a lot. And then also, yeah, I made a musical during COVID times with... Um, um, a hundred of my co 
alumni from Brown University, we decided to put together a musical to represent how we were feeling and what was going on. And it really ranged from um, family game night to long, uh, classroom scenes where the parents take over and Zoom. I mean, these are flashbacks now. These are not, you know, luckily what we're dealing with now. Um, and then some things we are still dealing with, like um, the George Floyd murder and how people felt about that, connecting with other friends from all over the world. Um, th there were just so many things we had to say that we ended up doing a, fi a, a ten song, um, ten song together to become a musical called Together Apart, and it was an amazing way to be creative during the COVID times, entertain people, and also we raised money for the the um, a foundation for for actors who are not um, it, weren't able to work during that time. But yeah, the, she she's uh, busy, definitely busy. There's a lot of things, but there's so many things, and you know that's what. And, and people to hang out with and make things with. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely yeah. And we have to add, too, that over the last three years, you know, you've released three children's albums, you know, exclusively on Amazon. What sort of motivated you to delve into children's music? Well, years ago, it was interesting. I, I was with major labels with, as a grown-up artist. And um, at one point, I'm always looking for interesting ways to get music out there because we, we're barraged with so much music, which is great. But as a musician, you're trying to figure out, well, how can, you know, wh wh what's, what's a different way I can do this? Um, and I've always done things in a kind of independent, different way. So Barnes & Noble asked if I would make a record with them and that they would put in all their stores. And I said, well, that's really cool. And they wanted something different than what I'd already done. And, and I realized I always loved music from when I was a kid, not only you know, grown up regular music, but there were some specific children's music and entertainment that I loved and I wanted to try my hand at that, like Sesame Street from the 70s and Free to Be You and Me and Carole King's record, Really Rosie, which they had um, more imagination, I felt like, than a lot of the grown up records, but they sounded like real grown up records. I wanted to make something like that. So I made a record called Catch the Moon and I asked my former bandmate, Elizabeth Mitchell, who was already a successful children's artist, to help me make the record. So we, we made our first one 20 years ago this mm. weekend. We put out our first children's record called Catch the Moon and it was also a board book. I followed that up with my Camp Lisa record and started a foundation to ki send kids to summer camp. And I just, I love doing that kind of a that kind of music. There was just so much space to be creative. I did connect with, I did make two books with Barnes & Noble after that with CDs that went with them that's now available wherever you get your music. And then I did connect with Amazon, which was another interesting way to get music out there. They wanted to um, try their hand at having a label. So I made three records. Uh, one was an ABC's kind of uh, straightforward children's record. Um, another one was called Feel What You Feel, which I won a Grammy. There it is back there with that record pointing to my little Grammy back there. <laughs> there it is. And, um, it. and then a lullaby record that had a lot of grown-up songs. And now I have a newer record called That's What It's All About coming out now with a band called The Hollow Trees. Great. Well, congratulations on that. I love that you make the transition into children's music. So let's get to quickly your, your uh, tour. You're making stops right here in our states, in Kirkland and in Vashon next month. Yes. Talk about your tour and what people can expect during the show. Okay, first of all, is that how you say it? Vashon, Vashon, or is it Vashon? Yes. Vashon Island. Vashon. Okay, Vashon Island. I'm excited to go there. Um, I get to stay in an Airbnb. I'm playing a children's show and a grown-up show, so oh, I get cool. to. Aww. And I have to say, I usually play a couple children's songs during my grown-up shows, and I end up playing some of my more popular grown-up songs during my children's show because they're always um, requested. But I'm so excited to go there and, and perform. It's just me and my guitar. I love telling stories and, and playing music. And I've spent a lot of time up there. Actually, one, one of the big places that carries my eyewear line is is um, Costco, so I get to go do ah, meetings nice. and, and meet there frequently. We've got a lot of friends and, and family up there, and um, I just, I've always felt very connected up there, also with all my work that I did with Amazon. Um, now I'm, do, I'm doing things a little bit differently, but, um, you know, still have got those connections, and I love going to Seattle, and now I'm going to check out Vashon Island as well. It's a oh, spot. well, we're, we're, we welcome you here with open arms, yes. and this was a pleasure to talk to you. Congratulations on all your success over the years. Thank you so much for having me, and um, people should definitely check out that new music on YouTube, Lisa Loeb Official. Like and subscribe. I'm supposed to say that. My son wants me to get more subscribers. I love the plug. Thank, Thank you, Lisa. You. Have a good one. Thank you.
All right, if you're interested in going to Lisa Loeb's show, we made it easy for you to scan the QR code on your screen. In the corner there, that link appears. It's gonna take you directly to cobonews.com slash hotlinks. From there, you're gonna find a link to Lisa's website to get those tickets. Oh, and she is just so passionate. Uh, so accomplished too, very busy.